Hi, this is Manos Brilakis from the Minneapolis Heart Institute, presenting case 15 for the second edition of the manual of CTO interventions. This is a case of balloon necrosable CTO that required use of the external crash technique. The patient was a previous bypass patient, which is important because such patients often have severe calcification leading to balloon necrosable lesions. He was referred for PCI of a right coronary artery CTO. The right coronary artery was occluded in the mid-segment and there was filling of the distal RCA and the PDA via collaterals from the left system. On different view, we see some septal collaterals filling partially the PDA. The distal vessel is diffusely diseased as is the proximal vessel. On the RA of view, there is a fairly um, well-defined uh, proximal cap, but it's a very small and diseased vessel. There are some septal collaterals feeding the PDA, which is important to know in case retrograde uh, crossing is needed. In this particular case, we decided to first try and degrade wire escalation. And we were, to our surprise, able to advance a Pilot 200 guide wire through a Corsair microcatheter all the way into the distal true vessel as confirmed by contralateral injection. The problem was, however, that no balloon would cross the lesion. This is an example of a balloon uncrossable CTO. The prevalence is about 9%, as seen recently in the Progress CTO registry, and it's important to have an algorithm of how to approach those lesions. And the main two strategies is one to modify the lesion, modify the cap, and the other one is to increase the guide catheter support to facilitate equipment delivery. The first step is to inflate small balloons or the threader combined balloon microcatheter trying to modify the proximal cap. And if it doesn't work, intentionally rupture the balloon in the so-called grenadoplasty or balloon-assisted microdissection. If that doesn't work, then one can try different microcatheters or the Carlino technique in association with uh, a technique to increase the support of the guide catheter. The third step is to do laser or if we can change the wire rotational atherectomy. And the last step is to subintimal techniques. In this particular patient, we did try balloons but could not cross. We did try a side branch anchor technique that provides more support for a second balloon to cross, but that was also not successful. And then we also tried uh, uh, various microcatheters, but there was no success. And at the time, we did not have laser in our laboratory. So eventually, after we exhausted all these options, we decided to use a subintimal technique. We inflated a balloon in the mid-RCA proximal to the uh, proximal cap. And then we created a small dissection that allowed us to advance a second polymer jacketed guide wire alongside the first wire into the distal right coronary artery. We then inflated a balloon right adjacent to the proximal cap. And by doing that, essentially, we crushed from the outside the proximal cap. And this is uh, an illustration of what was done. We exited the true lumen proximal to the occlusion. We created a knuckle, advanced the knuckle subintimally distal to the occlusion, and then delivered another balloon that was inflated adjacent to the proximal cap, essentially crushing the proximal cap. And after doing that, we were able to actually advance a balloon through the initial true to true lumen guide wire. And then predilate and deploy stents. The vessel is very small and diffusely diseased, but we do know that these vessels grow over time when there is increased perfusion. So in summary, balloon uncrossable CTOs are relatively common. Approximately 1 in 10 CTOs are going to be balloon uncrossable. And it is important to have an algorithm and a step-by-step -step approach to successfully approach those lesions. Thank you.